Hey, we are back. We're back live. Welcome to Grace Living Fellowship, Grace Living Online. We're so excited to have you here, and we're so excited to have everybody else here. Praise the Lord. We are so glad to be back in person and worshiping together. And we invite you to come and be with us every week. You can meet us right here, 1209 Monte Vista Avenue in Tula Rosa, New Mexico. Uh, or you can be with us online, whichever way is more comfortable for you. We just want you to know that you are here, you are part of our family, and we are loving you home. Praise God. So, again, welcome, and we're so glad you're here. We want to uh, open up with prayer. We have several prayer requests that have been already presented. We have uh, prayer requests for some people who are here today who are just not feeling very well, some migraines, and uh, some other people who are just feeling a little under the weather. We want to ask the Lord to minister to them. We have a very special prayer request. Um, Devana Torres. Devana Torres. We want to pray for her. We want to ask that God would minister to her in her time of need. God knows exactly what's going on, and he is able to minister and able to touch. And so we're going to just take her name to the Lord in prayer. And Vivian Mizell. And we also want to lift up Vivian Mizell. She had a brain aneurysm. Mm -hmm. And uh, she is a teacher, and she has some uh, young children, mm -hmm. as well as a classroom full of kids. And uh, this situation has really kind of left the family uh, just utterly devastated. So we want to lift up Vivian Mizell to the Lord as well. Uh, and I'm sure that there are probably any number of unspoken requests that we could men mention. God knows each and every need. So as we go to the Lord in prayer, I just ask that you would each take these needs as if they were your own and just lift them up to the Lord and just cry out as if it were your need as you pray. Shall we pray together? Heavenly Father, we come to you as we open up this service, as we come back together for the first time in a while to worship you and, and, and be a part of this family. But Lord, as a family, we also come together bearing the needs and concerns that we all have one for another. Lord, in this body, we have several needs, from migraines to, to aching body parts, to, to hurt backs, to, to sicknesses that we all carry deep inside, that are so num numerous that sometimes it seems almost impossible to mention them all. But God, you know each and every need, and you know each and every care that we have, from financial to personal to, to emotional. And Lord, you are able to meet each and every need. Lord, we cry out those needs to you in our own personal way, but we specifically mention some names to you right now. We cry out for Devon, and we ask that you would be with her right now. God, we ask that you would touch and you would be in the midst of this situation. Father God, we name her specifically to you today. We ask that you would be with her and that your spirit would minister to her and that you would lift her up. Oh God, this is so important to her and to her family. Lord Jesus, this would be an opportunity for you to show yourself mightily to this situation and to this family situation. Father God, meet this need in such a wonderful and unique way that they would be able to acknowledge with complete confidence that you have been in the midst of that situation and you have come through in such a powerful and wonderful way. And Father God, we pray right now for... for for the Vivian, Lord, that you would be in, their, in that family, in that situation, God. Lord, you are able to be there to give comfort and peace. And you are also there to be able to give uh, healing. And we ask that you would have your will and your way in this situation. Lord Jesus, again, we believe that you can and that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above more than we could ever ask or think. And so we trust in you and we believe that you are going to do what you desire and that you will have your way and your will. And we believe these things and we ask them according to your kingdom's sake and for your glory. In Jesus' name, be, be exalted and be praised above all else. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. We're going to have Sister Alyssa come and she's going to lead us in praise and worship. We have a very special praise and worship today. We're going to do a kitty style today, Children's Church. Mandy, are you ready? Yeah, all right. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to enter the gates. So, everybody put your hands together. You can clap. We don't have music today, so. I forgot my guitar. <laughs> okay. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad. Yeah. 
be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will enter His gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter His courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. Okay. Uh, praise 
the name of Jesus. Praise the name. He is with us. 
Amen. Amen. His word says he is with us. He is always with us. He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, even to the end of the age. Amen. God. I'm so glad the Lord is with us, no matter where we are, no matter how many there are of us. Whether there's three of us, or five of us, or ten of us, or twenty of us, the Lord is here with us. Amen. Mm. I'm so glad about that. Where two or three are gathered, praise mm. the Lord. We do have a few announcements to make. Um, we want to remind you uh, to continue to support the church financially. Uh, we need, of course, all of the financial uh, support that we can get. Of course, you can give locally here. Uh, we do have tithing envelopes if you need to have a tithing envelope. We also have Venmo, Cash App, PushPay, PayPal. We have all of these different options available to us. And we plan on doing a bake sale soon. And we do plan on having a bake sale very soon. Yes. And uh, we want to uh, uh, also, speaking of the bake sale, uh, as a part of that bake sale, we're going to be doing uh, hot coffee and cocoa as a part of our uh, cup of water and prayer ministry on Saturdays. And so we're going to be starting to take donations to bring in, to make sure we have the cocoa and the coffee and all the you know, creamer and sugar and everything like that. So if you can... Uh, over the next couple of weeks, if you have a little bit extra and you can buy a can of coffee or buy some sugar or you know things of that sort, mm -hmm. if you can do that and earmark it for the church, bring it either to myself or to Sister Robin and uh, make sure that we get that and have it earmarked for the church for the Cup of Water Ministry Outreach, and then that way we will have that ready to go for when we begin doing the hot cocoa and coffee part, because as the weather gets colder, we're going to be needing to make sure that we're warming the people up rather than trying to cool them down. So we want to make sure, and speaking of warming them up, we also have coats that have been donated. Praise the Lord for that. We've got coats donated yes. uh, to give out this winter, but they have been, they've been in storage, so they're a little dusty and dirty, and I'm wondering how many people could take maybe two or three coats and wash them and just hang up to dry uh, over the next couple of weeks and that way we can have clean coats to give out. How many How many could take maybe one or two, three cups, three coats that you could wash? Okay, so uh, if we can get those distributed out this next week, uh, divide them up, maybe two or three to each family, and uh, then that way they can be washed. Just hang them up to dry. You don't have to put them into your dryer. Just hang them up to dry. Let them dry for a couple of days, and then they'll be good to go. Uh, and ready to hand out. We can start handing them out to the people on the streets who are in need of coats that will be wonderfully ex uh, exciting and, and uh, acceptable for them to receive this winter. So remember to continue to support the church. Remember to find us on Facebook, find us on YouTube, find us on Giz uh, I started to say Gizmo. What is Gizmo? I don't even know. That's a new one for, That's a new one for <laughs> our social media director over here. She's like, I don't even know what that is. Um, find us on uh, on uh, Vin, uh, Gab on Vimeo. That's what I was trying to think of, Vimeo. And um, LinkedIn, Pinterest. We're on Instagram. We're You name it, we're on there. Look us up at Grace Living Fellowship, or Grace Living Online, excuse me, at Grace Living Online. You can also email the church. Info at gracelivingfellowship.org. That's also our website, gracelivingfellowship.org or gracelivingonline.org. Graceliving uh, or glfnm.org is also one of our websites. So you can find us, get in touch with us, drop us a line, let us know that you're watching. Comment down below in the uh, comment section underneath this video that you're watching, you're a part of our service today. Let us know that you were here. We certainly would love to hear from you. So praise the Lord. Thank you for being here again, and I just want to say how much of a pleasure it is to once again just be meeting together. Uh, this is such a treat for us. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it seems like every time we turn around, there's always something that's trying to prevent us from getting together. But you know what? God, God sees. God is not surprised by anything that is thrown our way, and He has had a plan all along. Mm -hmm. And so... I am so excited to know that God has been watching over us and he has brought us this far. Uh, I was making comment just before service started, and it's been almost a year, maybe a little over a year, about a year, maybe in a week, uh, that we soft-launched uh, the church. 
and uh, to see where we are now. We're not where we want to be, but we are we're where God wants us to be, and that's important for us to know. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this has just been an exciting year for us, and it's been crazy at times, but praise the Lord, He has led us, and He has directed us and guided us, and we are looking forward to where He is taking us into the next year. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> Bible study. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Wednesday night Bible study. We are moving our Wednesday night Bible study. Um, we found out that one of our young ladies has got an allergic reaction to something at one of the coffee shops. So we're actually going to move our, our Wednesday night Bible study to the North McDonald's. We're going to start meeting at the North McDonald's. Uh, their, uh, their insides are open until 8 o'clock. So we can actually move our service back to 6.30 instead of having to be at 5.30. So we can now be from 6.30 to 8. So we'll be at the North McDonald's on White Sands, uh, just, just north of town. Um, so kind of almost to La Luz. So if you're in the Tularosa La Luz area, uh, we're right there. So we'll be there on Wednesday nights from 6.30 to 8 inside the McDonald's having our Bible study there. Uh, and again, this has been because we found out, like I said, we found out that one of our young ladies was having an allergic reaction, and we don't want to put her uh, her health at jeopardy, so we wanted to make sure we moved that and shifted that. Uh, also, our Men of David uh, men's breakfast. We have been missing out on our men's breakfast begin because of so many things going on, but I'm ready for us to get back to having men's breakfast. How about you men? Amen. All right. Let's, let's, let's do this. Next... Uh, next Saturday, uh, that would be this coming up Saturday. Yes. Yep. Um, let's let's get together, men, and let's let's have breakfast. Where at? Um, okay. TBA. Yeah, let's do TBA for right now. Uh, if you're not already, go onto our Facebook page and make sure that you are uh, signed up into the Connect groups, and then join the Men of David. Uh, group so that way you can be uh, connected and you make sure that you're connected on all of our uh, information so join the Facebook connect group on Grace Living uh, Grace Living Online and then join the Men of David group that's a subgroup of that so that'll that'll make sure that you're connected so you have that information but yeah we're gonna get our Men of David going again and uh, having our prayer breakfast and ladies I don't know uh, and Lord in the works. Okay, so we will get you more information on when the ladies will start meeting again for y'all's Bible study. But hopefully that'll be going and uh, coming along soon as well. So praise God. Turn with me, if you will, in your Bibles or your phone apps to Hosea chapter 10, and we will be reading in verse 12. Hosea chapter 10 and verse 12. I am beginning a series this month called Reaping the Harvest. We have moved into the fall season. Uh, this is the harvest season of the year, and um, it just kind of seemed appropriate to me that we would begin talking about the harvest. The Bible talks a lot about church growth and church planning and soul winning in an agrarian mindset, talking about planting seeds and growing fields and reaping harvests. So this just seemed like a really good time to get talking about that and, and addressing that. But as I was thinking about it, I got to thinking about exactly how do you plant a field? How do you, how do you, how do, you do that? I mean, you know, go ahead. Hosea. Hosea chapter 10 and verse 12. Hosea 10. And verse 12. I have this one. Everybody found Hosea 10 and verse 12? Amen. Yep. Right. Hosea chapter 10 and verse 12, the Lord speaking, he says, I said, plant the good seeds of righteousness, 
and you will harvest a crop of love. Plow up the hard ground of your hearts, for now is the time to seek the Lord, that he may come and shower righteousness upon you. Plant the good seeds of righteousness, that you will harvest a crop of love, and plow up the hard ground of your hearts. For now is the time to seek the Lord, that he may come and shower righteousness on you. Heavenly Father, take the reading of your word. Let our hearts truly be plowed up, and let us receive this seed and let it be planted and be grown into the harvest that you would desire it to be grown into. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When we were in Indiana, we planted a small garden out beside our house. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to Indiana, but Indiana is a very green and very wet state. It's ideal for growing things like corn, which is what they grow a lot there. But that ground is pretty much capable of growing anything. I mean, I think if you planted a $1 bill, you would, you know, reap a hundred. Because it's just, it's that fertile. But there's still a process that has to be followed when you go to plant a field of any size, whether it's a small garden or whether it's a large field, and that is you have to prepare the ground, don't you? You have to dig up and, and churn up the ground so that it will be ready to be planted. And this scripture here, as it's talking about planting and reaping, it says right there in the middle of it, it says plow up the hard ground. Now, some translations have it this way. It says, plow up or turn up, break up the fallowed ground. And that's going to come important in just a moment. But he's talking about our hearts. He's saying that our hearts have got to be prepared, right? Before we can reap the harvest, the ground has first got to be prepared. It has to be cultivated. How are we supposed to cultivate the ground that we have, the heart that we have? Well, he answers that question as well. He says, by seeking the Lord. He says, now is the time to seek the Lord. If you want to cultivate the ground, if you want to turn up the ground, just break up this hard ground in your heart, you have to seek the Lord. Well, we need to seek the Lord. We need to be turning from whatever it is that we're currently pursuing, whatever it is that we're currently chasing after, and we need to be looking for God. We need to be searching for Him and for His will, and for His purpose, and for His glory, and for His direction. We also need to be breaking up that hardness within us. Sometimes we don't realize, we don't even recognize, I think, the hardness that develops over time. You know, around here, we, we look out and we can see whole areas of hard-packed earth, and we don't even think about it being hard-packed earth until it rains. And it's so hard-packed that the rain can't get soaked in, can it? It literally can't soak in fast enough because it's so hard-packed. And that creates what is known around in these parts as flash flooding, because it's just, the water just has to rush around because there's no place for it to soak in at. So, <clears throat> think about what that means to us in our spiritual lives. When our hearts become so hardened and so hard-packed 
that the Spirit, which is often represented by rain in the Word of God, can't penetrate. We've sat in churches and we've sat in, in, in uh, worship sessions and we've just been like, Ugh, I just wish this would end. I just, I'm so done. I'm so tired. You know, this is boring. Yeah, we all have. It's because our hearts are so hardened. We're not willing to receive what the Spirit is trying to pour into us. And the Spirit of God is telling us, He's saying, plow up that hard ground of your hearts. Get, break it up. Tear it down. Because you're literally cutting yourself off from what the Spirit is wanting to do. You've gotten so hard-hearted. You're so, you're so hard-packed against the moving of the Spirit. Mm. Now, I told you about that word fallowed, didn't I? Anybody want to guess what the word fallowed means? Huh? Okay, it is empty, but it's a very specific kind of empty. I had to look it up in the Webster's. <laughs> I just said that. I was about to cheat. You're trying to cheat on your phone. <laughs> That's all right. I had to cheat too. I had to cheat. Bunch of cheaters. F a l l o w fallow. It 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 it's a gardening term or a a agricultural term. It literally means a field that has been plowed, but left unseeded, usually for a year. And what that means is that over that year, the ground has grown hard, and it has been left empty, like Robin said, and it has grown weeds and grass in, whatever's blown in over top of it. And so it has just been left to... Fallow, that's what the word means. It's just been left to just grow wild. Huh. <laughs> to just become wild. Yeah. It was once soft. Are you hearing it? It was once plowed up. It was once soft and ready to be seeded. It was once ready to be planted for the garden. But it got left. And it became wild, and it became hard. It was intended to be used for a purpose, but it got abandoned. Hello. Sounds like my life. <laughs> All right. Come on. Sounds like my life. Yeah. Sounds like a lot of our lives. We want it to be used, right? We want it to be ready, and we, 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 we thought we were prepared. But something happened. We don't know what. Now, in the dictionary, it will tell us that sometimes this is intentional. That this leaving of the field to fallow is intentional. For better. It's not always, but sometimes it is. It's a time of waiting. It's a time of waiting. How many of us have been put into a time of waiting where instead of keeping ourselves in that state of preparedness, we allowed ourselves to get hardened? Yeah. I'm so Come, on. There. Come on. Everybody raise your hand. Come on. You know. All that, put your hands One time. You raise your hand. You're a sinner. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even hear the question. I'm perfect. He's not me. I'm perfect. Right? Now liar. He's a liar. <laughs> Sometimes it's intentional that we become fallowed, it's intentional that we get left alone. But it's not so much that we become hardened, it's so that we be replenished. But somewhere in that process, we allow ourselves to become hardened. And we allow ourselves to become wild. Mm -hmm. 
And when you read the whole of Hosea, and Hosea chapter 10, this is God speaking to Israel, and he is telling them he's not happy with them. And he said, you have allowed yourself to depend upon yourself. You have depended upon your own military might. You have depended upon your own strength and your own strategies. And you thought that you could go out and do things on your own. And you didn't wait on me. And because you didn't wait on me, I'm now going to turn you. And he mentions them. He says, I'm going to turn you, Ephraim, into an ox that pulls the plow. And I'm going to turn you, Judah. I'm getting, he's, he's, he's like, you're, you're, going to be, you're going to have to work the field now. You're going to have to become the animals that work the field. It's not a pleasant thing that he's talking about here. This is a hard thing to turn up the fallow ground because we didn't wait upon the Lord. We didn't take this time of waiting and allow ourselves to remain in that state of readiness, but we rushed ahead and we got ourselves into a place of hardness and wildness. So for us to be able to reap the harvest that God has for us, we must first be returned to that place of intended purpose. It could. <laughs> yeah, it could. And it preaches to me first. Please understand me. Before I preach anything to you, it always preaches to me first. How many times have I sat and cried and wept over this past year? That I haven't seen us grow like I thought we should. I haven't seen our outreaches be as successful as I thought they should be. We need to work on it harder. Right, well, we want every pushing, oh, it too much. pushing it too But I needed to understand that God was saying, mm -hmm. I needed you to take this year to be fallowed, to be enriched, to be nourished, but not to be hardened. And in some cases, I, I, I found myself getting a little hardened and a little bitter and a little upset and a little frustrated. Sure, I can take a time on that. Not so much on the church side, but just, yeah. I mean, circumstances. Where you're this, yeah, this whole year has just been a frustration in all aspects of it. Oh, we're God is telling us now it is time for us to return to our purpose, our intended purpose. Yes. Once the ground is prepared, once the ground is made ready, once the ground has been cultivated, then in order for us to reap the harvest, look what else he says in this passage of Scripture. He says, good seed must be sown. Good seed must be planted. What is the good seed? I'd say the Word of God, because in the New Testament, then Jesus was talking about that? Yeah. Specifically, he mentions here, he says, the good seed of righteousness. Right out of the passage of Scripture, he says, plant the good seed of righteousness. Now, that can't be our righteousness, because our righteousness is what? Filthy rags. Filthy rags. Our righteousness is worthlessness. I can never be good enough. I can never do good enough. I can try, but I'll fail. The only way that I can do good enough is to do good through God. And for allow God to do good through me. So that's the first seed. The first seed that I need to be planting is to do godly righteousness, to do the righteousness that God would do in me and through me. 
The other seed is what, what Teresa just mentioned when she said it's God's Word. Matthew chapter 13 uh, tells us the story of the sower and the seed, and we'll talk more about this next week, so I don't want to get too much into it. But it says the sower, the farmer goes out and he scatters the seed, and it's good seed. There's nothing wrong with the seed, but what's the problem in the parable? It's the ground that it falls upon. Some of it falls on bad ground. And it says the crows and the ravens come and they take the seed away and it never even has a chance to grow. And on some ground it falls among thorns and it gets choked out and it just dies before it has a chance to produce anything. And among some it falls on stony ground where it's not very deep and it's shallow and it just doesn't get a chance to put down roots and it dies in the sun. But then it says it falls some on good ground. Well, where do we want the seed to fall? We want it to fall on good ground, don't we? So we've got to make sure that our hearts are prepared, that our hearts are cultivated to be good ground. Mm -hmm. The next kind of seed that Scripture talks about is that mustard seed. The Bible talks about the seed of faith, which is the size of a mustard seed. It says with this mustard seed faith, you could literally speak to mountains and they will be cast into the sea. Right. Wouldn't you like to have that kind of faith? Wouldn't you like to have that kind of, just be able to just speak? And mustard seeds are small. And in Mark chapter 4, it says that kind of seed, that mustard seed is such a tiny seed, and yet when it's planted in good ground, and again, notice where he's saying he's planted it. It's planted in good ground. It grows into a mighty tree. And all of the birds can come and sit in its branches. If we want to be able to grow and become these mighty trees, if we want to become like Isaiah chapter 61 says, these mighty oaks in the kingdom of God, then we have to begin even from the smallest of seeds. You can't get much smaller than a church plant from the smallest of seeds planted in good ground. Something mighty can grow. The third thing that we read in this passage of Scripture, he says for the, for the harvest to be reaped, God must pour out His righteousness upon me. God will rain out His righteousness upon you. What is His righteousness? His holiness. His rightness. We don't like to talk a lot about holiness anymore. We want God to just leave us alone and let us do our own thing. But you know what? There is a standard of holiness that God does expect. We're not crazy about it, but God says, listen... When you come and you give your life to me, I wash away the sin. I wash away the bad things that are in your life. And now I want you to live without those things in your life. When I came to Jesus Christ 30, 30, 33, 32 years ago, he washed away the alcoholism. And now I live without the alcohol. He washed away the cigarettes. Now I live without the cigarettes. He washed away the pornography. And now I live without the pornography. He washed it away, not me. But because he did that, I live in his holiness, in his righteousness. Ezekiel 34, 26. I want to actually read this one. Excuse me. We'll show everybody had it pulled up. Ezekiel. One of those really fun books to find. Ezekiel 34 and verse 26. He says, I will bless my people and their homes all around my holy hill. And in the proper season, I will send the showers that they need. And there will be showers of blessing. 
We need him to rain down his blessings for us to be able to reap the harvest. We can't do it in our own skill, in our own strength. I think we've learned that this past year, haven't we? We've tried to do things, we've tried to rush things, we've tried to get ahead of ourselves, and we've realized we can't do it. We can't. Not without God blessing it, not without God pouring out His anointing and His blessings upon us. We've got to have that before we move. You know what I mean? We've got to have the rains come before. You know, I think about when Scripture talks about the, the harvest times. There is the spring rain or the early rain, and then there is the autumn rain or the latter rain. And the harvest comes after the latter rain. That's when they knew that it was harvest time. Well, we say it's harvest time, we need to make sure that we move after the rain. Move after the blessing. Move after God has opened the door and allowed us to go through. And the reason why is because God moves in accordance to His season. We read that here in this passage of Scripture, but we also see it over in Psalms. Psalms chapter 147. Psalm 147 and verse 8. Psalm 147 says, He covers the heavens with clouds and provides rain for the earth and makes the grass to grow upon the mountains and the pastures. And He gives food for the wild animals and feeds the young ravens even when they cry. He's saying He does this. He, take, he does all of this. He takes care of it. It's all according to His plan and His purpose. Isn't it? So we've got to move according to His plan, according to His season, and according to His blessing in His righteousness. So not only does the ground need to be cultivated, not only does the good seed need to be sown, but we've got to move when God moves in His season, when the rain is poured out. But the key to all of this is right there in that middle where he says, now it is time to seek the Lord. Now it is time. We can wait for all of this other stuff. We can wait for, for the, the ground to be cultivated. We can wait for the seed to be sown. We can wait for the rain to be poured out. But right now, right now in this time, is time to seek the Lord. What does that mean? What are you trying to tell us? Well, that answer is simple. It's time to pray. We've talked a lot before in the time past about how we needed to focus more on prayer, and yet every time we've talked about it, it seems like we get sidetracked, we get derailed from focusing on prayer. We need to stop talking about prayer, and it's time to actually pray. Amen. And that goes for me as much as it does for y'all. I've got to stop talking about it and start doing it. And that also means it's time to work. The garden's not going to plow itself. The seed's not going to plant itself. It requires laborers. What did Jesus say to his disciples? He said, pray the Lord of the harvest that he would send laborers into the field. It's time to work. We can't just sit back and expect God to do it all. It's time for us to contribute our portion and our part into the kingdom of God, into the work of the kingdom, and into the harvest that must be reaped. This is the time, as we begin into our second year of this church plan, of stepping out in faith and saying, Lord, here I am, a laborer in this field. I'm praying, I'm seeking you, and I'm ready to work. I'm ready to do what must be done so that the harvest can be reached.
Tularosa, Almogordo, Cloudcroft, Mayhill, Bent, Mescalero, all of these areas. This is our harvest field. God has opened up these doors for us to take. If we're really and we're ready and we're able to step up and step out in faith. Is there anybody here who's willing to do that? Yes, I am. Is there anybody here willing and ready to go? I am. I am. Amen. I am. Amen. Hallelujah. Shall we pray as we close this message together? Heavenly Father, we have heard your words. We have heard your cry to us that it's time to stop being the fallow ground, but it is time to start being the prepared ground. Prepared to receive the seed that you are going to plant here in this place. Father God, we are ready to work. We are ready to work in the field. We are ready to work in the harvest. And we are praying, seeking your face, seeking your direction, seeking your will, seeking your direction and your season. Because Lord, we understand that that is the most important thing. We cannot harvest out of season and we cannot plant out of season, but your season is important. God, I pray that we would hear these words, not just today, not just tomorrow, but that we would hear them echoing down through the days, down through the weeks and months ahead. That as we move forward in faith, we would be reminded that we wait upon you, but we are ready and we are prepared and set to go, ready to step out and move forward in faith believing that what you have called us to do, we are prepared and ready to move. We are ready to go. We are a field that has been broken up, that we are no longer fallowed, but that we have been turned over and tilled, and we have been cultivated and ready and made prepared for what you would plant within this place. Oh God, and for those of us who are still struggling with the hardness in our hearts, with, the, with those places in us that are still compacted and so hard, I pray that we would surrender those to you right now, and that you would break those up for us, and that you would, you would destroy those areas in us that have, that have kept us being to move forward and being able to step out in faith. And that we would receive your righteousness and your holiness and that we would be able to accept with humility the call that you have placed upon us. Let us be efficient and effective workers in your field. Laborers for the harvest preparing to reap that harvest for your glory. Lord God, if there's anyone here today that still needs to surrender their life completely to you, I pray that they would do so before they walk out of this building today. God, as we bring this video to a close, before they leave, that they would find somebody who can lead them and let them be turned over completely to you, Jesus, surrendering their life, finding themselves forgiven of their sins, asking you to wash them and make them pure and holy in your blood and in your word, because you are the one who is able to do it. You're the only one who can do it. Because you are the King of kings and Lord of lords, and we give you glory and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for joining us. If you would, send us a like, send us a share, send us a brief message in the video comment section below. Know that we love you, God loves you, and we will talk to you again.